You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back. From the holiday weekend back once again to rock out on your bi-weekly options sojourn known as the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting network upon which so many of you are binging these days. Excited to hit our penultimate episode of the Option Block for the year. One more on Thursday. Thursday will be our big year-end extravaganza, looking back at the madness, the mayhem, the maelstrom that was 2021. So stay tuned for that on Thursday. And of course, however you listen live after the fact, keep sending in those questions, those comments, those insights, those pearls of wisdom. Glad to see our most recent winner got his pro trading crate today and he's enjoying it. So you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolate. You get to choose your educational item, and you get to give us your size. You know, you're getting some stuff like that. Everything else is completely bespoke. I guarantee you, no two of these will leave the studio the same way. <laughs> they are all completely custom, completely crazy. Uh, we spend too much putting these together and shipping them out. But we like you guys. You guys are fun. So if you're over there in the secret club, another fun benefit you guys can look forward to. Theoptionsider.com, of course, slash secret club. Got a few more days left here for December. So get in there. If you haven't already, to get your name in the hat for the big December giveaway there. Crazy stuff afoot. Speaking of crazy stuff, this is our final Monday episode for 2021. So you know what that means, listeners. We got to go big before we can go home. So we thought, what, what 80s wrestler encompasses is big enough to, to send the year off in style? We thought, you know... There are some that are literally big enough, <laughs> but in the sense of who really encapsulates the spirit of what we've been doing here all year, no one wrestler really, really fits the bill and meets it all. So we thought, you know what, why don't we guess all of them? And by all of them, I mean, what we are now going to do is guess a program based upon its theme music. I got to admit, I haven't heard it in a long time and it, it's kind of fun. It's kind of rocking. And this is a show that pretty much... Had everybody in it. So let's see, listeners. Can you name that 80s wrestling TV show?
All right. I was just watching that unfold on my screen here as it was going. And man, that is about as 80s as it gets. If you could see the the, the live action visuals that were going with that <laughs> and the synth and everything else. That was pretty good. All right. It brought a smile to my face, at least. Hopefully it brought a smile to yours. Let's go around the horn. In some senses, that should be pretty easy. In another sense, maybe not. Who knows? Let's go around the horn. He got it right last time, I do recall. So, uh, Mr. Meatball. So instead, we're going to go out to let's end the year with he was our reigning champion. We'll have to crunch the numbers to see if he is still the reigning champion because he was last year's reigning champion. We will give him pride of place in our final go around this year. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. A, welcome back to the program. Uncle Mike, of course, from St. Charles Wealth Management. And then B, can you name that 80s TV show theme? It's great to be here on the last Monday of the year. And uh, I'm going to go with the Saturday morning rock and wrestling cartoon show. I, I, I actually can see the visuals going through my head uh, <laughs> as Hogan's walking to the ring and they mix it in with some cartoons. And uh, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, I was watching as I was going. You're right. You were totally right. It is Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling, which was in many ways the gateway drug for a lot of kids of the 80s who had no idea who Hogan and Andre were. This show just came on after your regular shows, your Dungeons and Dragons and your Transformers and whatnot. And then Hogan came on with this show. And you're right. It had live action. He's walking to the ring. I haven't seen this intro in forever. He's walking to the ring, smacking himself. And there's kids flocking to him, running down the street. (laughs) In between it, listeners, they have interspersed images of them racing in cars down the street. And there's, you know, Iron Sheik chasing him with Roddy Piper and a bunch of other stuff going on. And it's pretty much all the 80s wrestlers we've guessed here on the show all together in one cartoon. So well done, Mr. Uncle Mike and Mr. Meatball, sir, a.k.a. Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. A, welcome back to the program. And B, did you know that theme song, sir? Of course I knew that theme song. I knew that right away. Uh, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. It was one of my favorite shows to watch for the season and a half that I believe it was on. And uh, yeah, no, it was it was always hilarious. You'd have little re- big wrestler interviews in between the cartoons, and their cartoons were always some ridiculous premise. It was it was a great show. It was a great show, and this is a great show. So let's kick it off with the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down exactly that. What the heck is trading out there? And an interesting day. We are pretty much back in the green, listeners. You know, it's been a few days of of rallies out here now, the end of last week as well, hit new records out there in the S&P. And coming into today's show, we're looking at record territory yet again. S&P up a full percent, almost 1.1% right now as we kick off the show. NASDAQ off, closing in on 1.2%, about 1.16%. And the Dow, the laggard, only up a little bit less than, excuse me, well, that rocking out to Hogan got to me, up a little bit less than two-thirds of a percent. Of course, so we're seeing the weekend trickle a little bit back in here, which is kind of interesting. You know, they they come for the weekend pretty aggressively going into the holiday weekend. So it kind of comes back pretty aggressively as well. And that's pretty much what we're seeing out there today. VIX Cash was holding firm right around 18 hand, about 18.05 when we kicked off the show. I was down about two tenths of a point, but not a heck of a lot, given the fact of what we're seeing out there in the broad market today. Uh, VVIX was at a 117, down not quite four points, about 375. Uh, VXX was at about a 1980. When we kicked off the show, that puts it down almost half a point, about 0.45 out there. UBXY at about a 13 and three quarters, so only down about a quarter of a point from our last show. And Vol Q was actually up, up to about an 1840. It was about an 18 quarter on our last show. So a lot to unpack. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with our champion once again from this week, and probably our champion for the year. I'll have to crunch the numbers again. So a, a early congratulations to you, Uncle Mike. A, if you have any other thoughts of Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. And B... Hopefully, did Santa bring you anything fun? Because we are just coming off the holiday weekend. And then see what is lighting up your tape in these markets, sir. Well, first off, Santa brought me this uh, fancy new microphone that uh, it, it, it's above my head to set it up. So it's gonna, I'm going to spend some time this week. And hopefully on the Thursday option block, I will sound like a pro like Mark Longo does. So very excited about the new Look microphone. Look forward to booming new sound from Uncle Mike in the new year, listeners. Can't wait. Can't wait. 
And then in terms of the rock and wrestling connection, I think uh, just a couple episodes that I remember from it that I, I think I, 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 that was definitely the highlight of my Saturday mornings. I like the Bugs Bunny and Tweety show. I like that one, but I definitely remember making every effort to watch that. That was totally my favorite show as a kid watching it. Uh, I remember the one where uh, the iron, they were trying to teach the Iron Sheik how to drive and they were stuck with Nikolai Volkov driving the whole time and he was a horrible driver. And so the Sheik couldn't get his driver's license and he was just having such a hard time with it. And so the whole time he's just trying to learn how to drive and he's yelling and uh, saying bad things to Nikolai Volkov. Then finally he says to Volkov, how on earth did you get your driver's license at the end of the show? And then he says, I got in Siberia where there's no roads for miles and miles and miles. It's easy to drive there. So that's how you can get your driver's license real easily. Apparently you go to Siberia like Nikolai Volkov did. So anyway, uh, in terms of this market, it is definitely not in Siberia. It's, it's it's more along the lines of the of uh, the hottest place on Earth, Death Valley, apparently, because of how hot it is. Because <clears throat> I have to say it one last time this year, apparently, never before in the history of the entire stock market has there ever been a better time to sell than uh, right now, uh, because we are at new all-time highs in the S&P 500 again. And uh, I was thinking, I remember last week, right before the close on Friday, I'm like, well, it's probably not going to do that much next week. I'm probably just going to keep a lot of powder dry next week and chill out. But you know what? I'm going to start. I'm just going to pretend that 2022 is starting right now. Because if for some odd reason we do get a rally next week, I'm going to be ticked. And so I put some more deltas on the table. And uh, sure enough, I got lucky. So um, I was definitely not expecting this pop today. Uh, but uh, don't get me wrong. I'm glad it's happening. And um, I think that uh, this is just a situation to where I wouldn't heed too much into this rally. Uh, because once again, when you have days like the day after Thanksgiving and you have uh, weeks like this week where it's uh, typically low volume, I wouldn't necessarily believe that this is a um, it's either a late Santa Claus rally or uh, whatever way you want to look at it. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily looking at this as uh, something that's going to be the the breakthrough day to continue to keep us going further going into next year. But the reality of it is, is that uh, the market's higher on the day, so we need to respect it. We need to uh, trade appropriately based on that. Uh, some other things with which I'm looking at, 10-year note did drop a little bit on Friday, uh, or a little bit last week, I should say. Uh, we're steady today. And so we do have that happening. Um, silver is flat on the day. And uh, we have VIX uh, relatively flat on the day. Excited to hear Seabass's commentary on the VIX shortly. And then in terms of the actual sectors with which we have going right now, uh, a lot of this is getting driven by technology. Uh, just going down my list of sectors, uh, technology is up, uh, looking at XLK, the technology sector, up one, roughly 1.7% 1 on the day. Uh, everything else, and we, we're getting some movement from energy as well, but energy isn't as big of a, a player in the S&P 500 as technology is. Uh, we have that as well as disc consumer discretionaries, but primarily this is a technology-driven rally uh, from everything that I can tell right now. And so I think that uh, what's just going to be interesting to see uh, will be is if this continues throughout the whole week. I'm not much of a sh super short-term kind of guy, but uh, in looking at this, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to have uh, a lot of legs for the rest of the week, but uh, I'll be happy if it does, because then uh, my 2022 started early. I'll be happy with that, but um, we'll see where we're at. So I think right now, just regardless, the main thing I want to emphasize on today is that uh, this is a typically low volume trading week. So just heed caution uh, as you're doing things, folks. And that is my thought on the markets today. Let's go down now to deep into the heart of Texas, where we are joined by the greasiest of meatballs. Mr. Meatball A, do you have any enduring memories of Hogan's Rock and Wrestling? B, did Santa bring you anything fun this year? And C, if you can get around to it, what's catching your eye in the market, sir? Well, I don't know if you saw on Twitter what Santa brought me, but uh, I am gonna, you're going to be jealous, Mark. I did not. Now I'm intrigued. What is it? Uh, I got a 3,508-piece 
Mega Blocks, Master of the Universe, Castle Grace. <laughs> yes, I have that assembled. I got that a couple of years ago. I have that assembled somewhere in the corner of my studio. It is, it is impressive. Let me also say to you, it is a uh, a daunting build. There's a lot of a lot of grunt work in there, <laughs> building the walls and stuff. But it is a fun one. It, it, it is. When I saw that, I was like, I must have this. Yes, it was. It's pretty cool. You're gonna have fun with it. Yep. Me and the boy are gonna build it. Um, yeah, you know, I think I went over my memories. Love, loved Hulk Hogan, but um, let's talk about this market today. Uh, you know, yeah, the VIX is flat, but remember, coming off a long weekend, uh, you expect the VIX to actually be up uh, close to a point, and so the fact that it's flat signifies that it is essentially down, which we see better in the VIX futures. That's why UBXY is sitting near an all-time low, VXX all-time lows. Uh, VIX futures getting a little bit of a pummeling. Market across the board, as Mike said, pretty much up. Strong day for technology, uh, energy, and uh, consumer discretionary also having a pretty nice day. The lone area that's actually down is is biotechs. Uh, some of the names I'm keeping an eye on, Apple continues to impress. Uh, it, it's getting near that 180 mark. That's been a spot where it has turned around in the past. Uh, the airlines were down today. They're starting to from all the cancellations over the weekend, but they appear to be making a little bit of recovery. Would not be surprised to see them up on the day. The one that you know of the of the mega te- cap tech, uh, Amazon is down today. Not 100% certain why, but uh, Amazon has gone and and, and a lot, you know we talk about the performance of big tech. Amazon has gone exactly nowhere over the last six months. Uh, it's actually down, and year over year, uh, it's barely up. So it, it, it's had some big moves, but has not really done very much over the course of the year. It's only up about 150 points year over year. Uh, that puts it absolutely at the bottom of the, the FANG names. Uh, Facebook having a strong day, Ford having another strong day. It looks like it wants to make a run uh, at 25. I keep waiting for that to happen, but that might be in the cards here. Uh, And that is kind of what's laying up my tape today. I am looking at your tweet right now, sir, and it does look good. (laughs) Makes me want to go pull mine out of the corner here and take a look. By the way, I did recently get an add-on for that. There is a Point Dread add-on. You could build a little addition and put the talent nice. fighter right on top of it. I have yet to complete that addition, but it is sitting in a box somewhere. I started it. Uh, so there are additions. If the, how many pieces of it? If the thousands of pieces is not enough. 3,508. <laughs> Hopefully your son helps you. I tried to get my little guy to help me out and he, he did some, but uh, I, I ended up having to do most of it myself. But it was fun, nonetheless, to, uh, to build that bad boy. It was a go. Speaking of things Santa gave you before I regale us with what's going on in the market. Uncle Mike and Mr. Mr. Meatball, I can guarantee you that neither of you will guess what the big guy brought me, which will impact the options market for many years to come. Take a guess. Go ahead. I dare you. Nothing. You guys are uh, stunned into silence. <laughs> the Kragle from the Lego movie. <laughs> yes. Crazy glue. Yes. That's what I got in my stocking. If you were going to guess a lordship, some kind of noble title, then yes, the answer is that's exactly what I got. My wife went out and purchased land for me in Scotland, which now allows me to have a, a royal, a, not a royal, but a noble title. I can now call myself Lord on all of my legal documents, like my passport and my driver's license. So I, I am in the process of updating those as we speak. Lord Mark Longo will now be my name. On, I'm planning to go visit my land in Scotland one of these days as well. So in case, in case it wasn't clear throughout the rest of the year, it is now official. I am indeed the Lord of the options market by way of Scotland. What say you? You guys are stunned into silence. Good for you. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord Longo. Yes. Lord very Go. good. Lord Longo. Lord, Lord Go. I know Lord, I've been lording Lord, it over Lord, you guys Lord, for years, Go? but now it's official. Now I can do it officially because I have the documentation that is on my wall. I am officially a, a, a Lord or at least a, a member of the upper nobility, let's say. So if there ever was a question, who is the reigning Lord? Of the options market. Now it is official. Tis I as we keep on rolling. <laughs> yes, that was a that was a fun surprise. I was not expecting that in my stocking this year. A noble title. Who knew? Who knew such things were readily available? 
but they are. <laughs> All right, let's go on out now. Let's see if, what the markets think of my newfound nobility. Are they rallying to celebrate? Let's see. Uh, at least from a volume perspective, they're looking all right. VIX is actually looking kind of light today, so it's not impressed by my new noble title. 137,000 contracts on the tape here for VIX. Uh, the ADB is right around 730 right now. That's, that's a heck of a lot of paper for VIX. If passes prologue, we won't be able to sustain that ADB for long, but it is intriguing to see it back north of 700K again. SPY, 3.33 million on the tape right now. A lot of threes out there. The ADB is about 5.7 million. Uh, the S, 843,000 contracts on the tape. It's right around half of its ADB, which is about 1.63 million. And the small caps looking kind of light today. Only 314,000 contracts on the tape for IWM. Its ADV is north of a million right now as well. I got a feeling that probably won't sustain either. 1.06 million. That's a heck of a lot of paper for IWM. Let's see if there's a heck of a lot of paper lighting up our tape out here today. Let's go to the top 10 most actives. And all in all, I guess you can call this a decent day. It's not blowing the doors off, but it's not a buck 20 either to break into the top 10. In fact, it's 222,000. That gets you to Microsoft back in our top 10 after taking a bit of a hiatus out there. Let's see what good old softy is up to out there today. Again, we haven't seen them in our top 10 in a little bit. So Microsoft getting a bit of a lift up nearly 2%, about 1.85% over six handles. Nice little pop here. For softy, number nine, we've got AT&T, what the old timers used to call telephone, 224,000 contracts. <laughs> number eight, Lucid, back to Lucid. You know you have to have some EV name somewhere. Today it's Lucid, 255,000 contracts, number eight. Number seven, AMC, is its other half there? Is it better half perhaps? Yes, they're both there, so we shall find the other one soon. Number seven, AMC, 278,000 contracts. Number six, the aforementioned Ford, Ford on the rampage again today, up a little over half a buck or about two and three quarters percent. Closing on the 21 handle, about 2080. What do you think? You think Ford's poised for a 25 handle? Is the meatball correct or is this just madness out here in Ford land? Hit us up. Let us know, you folks out there. Number five, Facebook, 386,000 contracts on the tape for good old FB. Number four, the other half of the symbol twins, it's AMD. 443,000 contracts on the tape for AMD. This is yet another day where AMT is, AMD is kicking this little brother to the curb. Everyone's talking mean, 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 but AMD still put up the numbers day after day. Uh, number three, it's NVIDIA. The top three is kind of encapsulated these days. NVIDIA is usually hanging out up there, and you know what the top two are usually, listeners. Number three, NVIDIA, 481,000. Numero due, Tesla. Good for almost a million contracts on the tape. For Tesla, that's nothing to sneeze at for Tesla out there today. 927,000 contracts. Tesla up 40, about 45 handles, or about four and a quarter percent, trading about 1112 out there right now, or pretty close to it. So, an interesting day for people who are talking about 1111. They were tweeting about that. So, apparently, they got what they were looking for <laughs> out there today. So, number two, Tesla, 927,000. Number one, it's the fruit company. Only barely more than Tesla right now. 968,000 contracts on the tape. So, apparently, when we saw that massive explosion of weekly call buyers out there, that paper has reigned in a little bit out there in Apple right now. 968,000. That's nothing to sneeze at, obviously, but also kind of light compared to where Apple is. But you know what? I take that back because there are still someone. Someone's putting up a hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> of the D one eighties aspiring at the end of this week. This week and eighty seven thousand of the one seventy five. So there are still a fair amount of these uh, little crappy weekly calls going up. I guess if you take these out, there's really not much else trading in Apple out there right now. The top five listeners are buck fifty of the D one eighties again expiring this week. All these are expiring this week. 87,000 of the Dees 175s, 64,000 of the Dees 182 halves, 57,000 of the 177 halves, and rounding out the top five today, 50,000 almost exactly of the 185. So again, it's a fair amount of paper going out just to today. So close to, close to half of the paper is these crappy weekly garbage calls going out this week. So you take that out of there, it's a little bit of a different story. Out there in Apple land. Speaking of a different story, it's kind of a different story on the earnings front right now, as in not much of a story. Who's really wants to wants to pop off during the holiday weeks? Not many people. So not a heck of a lot on the docket this week. We do have updated earnings move, earnings move results and earnings seasons reports for you hot off the presses for what little there is to add 
right now. So if you're excited about everyone's favorite calm, aka Cal Maine Foods, which in spite of the name is not headquartered in Maine, but actually in Jackson, Mississippi, and they are an egg producer, if that blows your skirts up, we got you covered out there. And we got Fuel Cell, that's an interesting one out there, F-C-E-L, out of Danbury. Danbury, Connecticut. I uh, had some family who worked out in a, uh, a fuel cell manufacturer in Connecticut. I wonder if it was them. Probably was. And this was 20 odd years ago. So, <laughs> again, shows you how long we've been doing this dance with fuel cells. They're going to be the next hot thing. And it seems like every few years they are. Let's go out and see what our, our earnings reports have for us today. We've got, oh, Calm isn't even, uh, isn't even today. It is tomorrow after the bell. And Calm, if you're wondering, they were at 36.50 right around in their stock. They're pricing in about a buck 90 in the past. They moved to buck 17, so they're pricing in a lot more, a lot more vol in their fresh egg distribution out of Jackson, Mississippi. So uh, interesting stuff there, egg vol. <laughs> Who knew that was a thing? But let's see. Looking at the season, the season's pretty much hanging out at about that 99. percent It's pretty much where we settled out. And let's see if there's any new season trades i don't see any new ones so we're kind of playing wait and see right now for the holidays to wrap up listeners and for that new cycle that new season to begin then we'll have a new wash a new wave of earnings season earnings trades earnings move and earnings move results reports for you folks to sink your teeth into now it is time for all of us to collectively sink our teeth into some unusual activity it is time for the odd block It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Odd Block portion of the show where we get weird we get wild looks like we got some seahawks fans in our chat they are lamenting the fact that the bears took it to them this week i didn't know we had seahawks fans in there it just shows the the breath the reach all the way out to the apparently frozen northwest you guys looked like it was lambo field in that game this weekend snow coming down like crazy had to get the plows out for the seahawks <laughs> that's crazy we're right the bears Third string quarterback taking it to the Seahawks somehow, just barely eking out a one point ridiculous victory. That's that is pretty funny. So I, I do feel for you Seahawks fans as the Bears have been on the receiving end of many of those drubbings this year and those ridiculous, stupid endings. <laughs> so unfortunately, the ball rolled against you folks these days. You can't fault the third string QB for coming out there and making it happen. <laughs> Let's see what our eye of Sauron is out there making happen today. Let's see if we got some newcomers. Let's kick off, or let's just say let's wrap up the year with some with some weird newcomers. First, let's go out to this one. This is 5-9 Inc. This is a newcomer here to the odd block. Ticker symbol 5-N, F-I-V-N. Trading right now, 138.61, off about a buck, almost a buck and a half. Nearly a full percent today. It's not a great day for 5-N over the course of... The uh, over the course of the year, this name has had quite the turbulent year and ended up being not a great year for five and nine Inc. A year ago, they were trading 176. So <laughs> substantially north of where they are right now. And then all the meme madness kicked off and they got up to on March 1st, 197.79. And then they gave it up by March 30th. They're trading 151 again. Then they did that dance for a while up to 187, almost 190 back down to 150 odd. All the way through till the end of June or middle of June, really. And then June, they started kicking off again. They rallied in throughout June and up into July and into August. By August, they topped out for the year at 211.68. So they had a nice run going there for a while. And then since August, August 4th, they pretty much have given it all up. They <laughs> sold off hard by, let's see, August 31st, they were trading 158 again. And then they proceeded to sell off again. They're trading 140 on October 11th. And they got down to their pretty much low of the year just this month. Earlier in December, they got down to 122.33. So they sold off from 211 to 122 from August to December. So a rough, 
latter portion of the year. I don't see what this name does. Uh, this is not one that's on my radar very often. So uh, this one, no idea. Looks like they have some Indian subsidiaries and a few other things. So very much an international name here. But a rough year <laughs> for 5-9 Inc., a.k.a. 5 in. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found. Oh, given the fact that it's a new name and they've had a crazy year, I guess it makes sense. We see some crazy put action going up out here. In particular, it was 8,500 of the July 185 puts. Yes, I said that right, listeners. 185 puts. I just said the stock's trading 138 and a half right now. <laughs> so someone coming in and deciding, you know, why sell, I don't know, the 135 puts when you can sell the 185 puts that are nearly 50 handles in the money? <laughs> so you know this is going to be a beefy option. The market on these was 50 bucks at 54.70. Wow, a nearly $5 wide market on these bad boys. And they came in when the stock was a little bit lower, 138, and put up these puts for 50 and a half bucks. So right off the bid. And let's see, there are there are earnings, obviously, between now and July. The next earnings is in February. You're probably going to get two between now and July, I'd imagine, or pretty close to it. The vol, if you're curious, was a 40, 40 vol on these bad boys. Mr. Meatball, we don't see these too often. We see a lot of line in the sand puts. We don't see line in the sand puts that are 50 handles in the money. At that point, the line has been crossed. We call these more colloquially the death trap puts because now you're you're in it. You're, you're getting that stock, whether you want it or not. Hopefully you do. So intriguing stuff. What do you make of 50 handle in the money puts and these particular ones here in everyone's favorite newcomer, Fiven? Yeah, so Fiven, these are July of this year puts. And they're opening. It, it, uh, you know, what it is, is essentially just an end around covered call, I suppose. Uh, for someone that didn't want to buy the stock, but I, I don't fully get why why you would go that route. It, it's a little bit of a weird one. Um, maybe somebody definitely somebody that wants delivery on the stock. I mean, that's the only explanation for it. Uh, and they're you know they looked and saw that there was five or six bucks of premium and said, hey, you know, I can sell these puts, essentially own the stock and take in some premium. Uh, so why not? Maybe they don't want to be on the uh, registered as a shareholder, so they sold these instead because it doesn't have to show up on a U4. That could be it. There's not many reasons why you go this deep in the money. That could certainly be one of them. Clearly, you want to get yourself some stock because that's what's going to happen nine times out of ten in these types of scenarios. So we'll keep an eye on these. We'll come back to these in July. <laughs> sounds crazy. July. This sounds July of 2022. Say that out loud, listeners. Doesn't this sound like you're living in the Buck Rogers future? But indeed, we are living in the soon-to-be present, and we'll keep an eye on these bad boys. Meaty, very beefy. Some might say meefy puts here in everyone's favorite newcomer, Fiven, a.k.a. Five Nine. Speaking of weird F names, <laughs> let's go out to a name we just talked about a few months ago here on the show, about a month and a half ago, actually. This is Fluor, ticker symbol FLR. This is Fluor Corp. Oh, this is that construction firm out of Texas that we were talking about. That's right. And they do a lot of infrastructure work for oil and gas and power infrastructure names out there. So Makes sense why they'd be based out of Texas. At the time, back on the show, November 15th, we profiled some puts going out earlier this month, the December 10th. So in the weeklies, 3,600 of the D20 puts going up right on the bid for 20 cents. That's about a 50 vol. The stock at the time was 2296. There are no earnings in the life cycle of this. They came back and liked it. They did approximately double. Their total of about 72, almost 7,300 traded on the day. So someone really liked this line in the sand. They also liked doing it in the weeklies and not in the monthlies, which is strange. Usually when you see that, there's some other announcement. Maybe they're trying to avoid like an earnings. There were no earnings in this put. They just decided they liked the weeklies for whatever reason. And let's see where the stock was, where the stock did go out on expiration. And looks like they were smiling because the stock went out. They sold the 20 puts for 20 cents. And the stock went out at 24.06 on the 10th, listeners. And yes, these puts were still open. So it looks like paper, if you add in all the volume that went up that day, all about 7,300. Paper pocketed close to a buck fifty, about a buck forty-five 
on this trade. So not bad work for about a month and a half, Mr. Meatball, even though kind of weird that they chose the weeklies. But uh, we've seen crazier things. What do you think about these line-in-the-sand puts that were not crossed in Fluor? Which, by the way, listeners, is still trading north of that, trading 24.39 right now. Well, you know, win's a win. Uh, took in a nice took in a nice profit. Uh, trader was right. Keep an eye on on this this trader if he comes if he or she comes back in. That's a good sign that you know we now know a relatively at a minimum they're a smart customer. So uh, you know keep an eye on them, and when they come back in, uh, find see if there's a way to piggyback maybe in a more meefy way. Yeah, I'll have to go dig and see. I have to imagine that they probably came back after the tenth. We didn't have a show right after that, so we did, probably didn't see it on our radar, but. I can set our scanner to go see if they have come back because if they're doing it in the weeklies, chances are they probably got something else they're planning on doing. And so the chances are good they probably came back. They only got 20 cents after all, so it's not like they're done for life. <laughs> they have more they could get out here. So intriguing stuff in Fluor. Now if you're done with weird F names, let's go out to an even weirder Q name. Let's set your way back machine back to November 8th, listeners. At the time we profiled... Some more, man, the line in the sand was just the trade of the freaking year. Pretty much all we talked about, it seemed like. It was that, and if it wasn't that, it was buying calls, obviously. Now, this one was on November 8th. A line in the sand puts in Quidel Corp. This is a provider of rapid diagnostic testing solutions for cellular-based virology and molecular diagnostics. So there you go. <laughs> and let's see, at the time, we profiled the D95 puts going up through the bid, they were bid 55 cents. They blasted them away for 51 cents. 4,534 times. The stock was 124.66. The stock was almost 125. They were selling the 95 puts. They're about a month and a half to go. And they still got a hefty, hefty 55 vol, 40, 51 cents on these. I mean, these were, these had a ways to go, 30 handles. And they still got a fair amount of juice for these. So be thankful for the biotechs out there. They, they keep giving giving the gift of premium out there. No earnings. The earnings are in February. And it looks like another one where this line was <laughs> never even looked at. The stock closed on expiration at 161.75. So this thing went completely in the other direction. This is probably one of those examples that maybe I wish I bought the stock because <laughs> instead of selling the puts because, yeah, they missed out on a nearly 40 handles to the upside. Not a bad little run here for Qdel. Interestingly enough, though, they didn't hang out for much of it, if really any of it. They put this trade on on November 8th, sold them for 51 cents, and then it looks like they came back scrambling on November 11th and bought them back for 40 cents, which was strange because this wasn't like the stock, the stock had moved in their favor. The stock was 132.69. So the stock was up eight bucks from where they put them on and they came scrambling back in to buy these puts back. So they ended up on this whole trade. They, they should have made all of it. Quite frankly, they only made 11 cents. So they made about 50 grand. There's nothing to sneeze at, obviously, but this could have been a lot better, obviously a lot better if they bought the stock, but that's, you know, hindsight is always 2020 there, but this is an interesting one. We don't see people usually coming back, scrambling back in a couple of days later to buy their puts back after they're working pretty well in their favor, especially if there isn't an earnings announcement or something. I could see if you put the puts on, the event happens, the ball comes out. Okay, you come back in and take them off. That makes sense. This one, not, I mean, something drove the stock, but there was no major corporate event that I could see here. So they just took them off <laughs> and uh, only got their 11 cents, which is kind of a strange one. Right now, though, the stock is back down. It's back down to about 133, almost 133 and a half. So it has sold off quite a bit since December expiration, but nowhere near the 95 strike that they put on here. So a bit of a weird one. It was a pretty far out line in the sand, not the most aggressive one we've seen, Mr. Meatball. And yet it still gave them a fair amount of juice. And yet they came back in and took it off. They, they closed their winner out very early, sir. What say you? Maybe they got cold feet, decided, hey, maybe I should just... Uh take what I've made and get out of here. Um, you know, maybe they made a, a change of, of ideas on the trade itself. You, 
you never exactly know. Uh, maybe they had their position change. Uh, you just you just don't know. You do not know, indeed. All you know is that they left roughly almost two hundred grand on the table by closing these bad boys out early. But again, I'm not going to fault someone for taking risk off the table. Uh, this one <laughs> seemed like it was kind of a bit of a no brainer. But hey, crazier things. Maybe they had another trade they wanted to get into, and they needed that capital back. Who knows? Either way, a winner, if a bit of a modest one here in Qdell. But you know who's never modest? He's Uncle Mike. So let's get to him. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Strategy Block. The time when Uncle Mike, the least humble guy that I know, (laughs) holds court for some options, wit, and or wisdom. Uncle Mike, we're not building, or I should say busy building, sweet, sweet, Masters of the Universe Lego knockoff Mega Blocks. What do you have in store for us this week, sir? Well, I, I, I've never built such a thing because of the fact that uh, I don't have it. So I'm the only one on the show that doesn't have it. I feel so alone. I, well, I now mean, I uh, know what we need to get you for for your birthday. There we go. Oh Mark, and I, Mark, Mark and I will go halvesies. <laughs> I will always yeah. give the gift of Motu. <laughs> love it. Love it for sure. So, well, what I do like to talk about today um, and, and, and I want to go over just general models of asset allocation. And a lot of times people are looking at their overall portfolios this time of year, uh, deciding if they want to invest in different things the following year, whether it's uh, stocks, bonds, or even real estate in Scotland for that matter. And so with that, uh, I want to go through uh, just a general dynamic of how I like to look at things and just what's kind of generally accepted within the financial world. So first off, if you put 100% of your assets into uh, just being long calls, for example, it's probably not going to work out too well. Now, with that, let's take it back a step. Let's say you put 100% of your assets into just equities, your uh, portfolio full of stocks, stock-based mutual funds, ETFs, etc. Well, that has worked very well for the last couple of years. However, One thing that I'm finding just with talking to people as often as I have been every day is that a lot of people are very much, in my opinion, over-allocated to stocks. Now, the question then becomes, well, what can I invest in that's uh, going to give me this rate of return, this type of track record? Uh, Real estate's high right now. Bonds have no yield. Uh, Sheba. You're going to say Sheba Inu, aren't you? Sideways things. And and, and then Sheba is just something to where (laughs) uh, it would make it too easy. So I wouldn't want to invest in that either. So here's the typical starting point as to where I would want to go through with, with somebody. Step one, uh, determine their age. And this is just a very uh, basic model that a lot of uh, financial planners use. Determine your age. Let's say that someone is 60 years old. Well, 60 is the percent of your overall net worth that in theory should be in something that is, quote unquote, safer. And then 40% is your money that could be something of the risk capital. Now, that's a very general starting point. Now, from there, you could take what's known as a riskalyzed test. Uh, we offer that. And I'd actually, if you, anyone wants to take a riskalyzed test, listen at the end on how to contact me. You can take our RCM riskalyzed test if you want to see where your risk sentiment is. Some people are okay being a little bit more aggressive. Some people are okay uh, being a little bit more conservative with their portfolio. Uh, so that's another way with which you can go. Now, what I want to go through today is just the fact that A lot of people that I'm seeing with their larger uh, nest egg, in a lot of cases, even if they are 50 or 60 years old, what I'm seeing when people are showing me their portfolios is that they're 80 to 90% in stocks right now. And granted, this is the retail world, so don't view this as some type of indicator or anything like that. But what I do think is that if we do have another pullback, that, that they're going to be in, a lot of people are going to be in for a rude awakening. So with that being said, what are some things that I can do to perhaps still have decent stock exposure, but maybe have a plan for in case the market goes lower? 
Well, if you want to have that, let's say that you're of the school of thought that you hate bonds. No matter what, you hate bonds. And quite frankly, bonds in and of themselves, I hate them too. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can sell covered calls on government treasuries. You can sell covered calls on uh, perhaps corporate bonds if you wanted to use LQD. And then you can get some type of a yield by selling some covered calls against the bond. So there's advantages and disadvantages to that, of course. But that's one way with which you can have a conservative investment or a more conser- typically considered a more conservative investment than stocks and create some type of yield on it. Now, the other thing that you could do as a quote-unquote safe asset or safer aspect is perhaps use some of that stock exposure and put some collars on it. Uh, So for example, if you own a stock, it's at 50, perhaps you can put on a 55-45 collar on it. You won't have to worry about taking capital gains on it, uh, that is, unless you get called away on it. Uh, But if that's the case, then perhaps you get another 10% and you're thinking about selling it, then maybe that's a way with which to do it and uh, knowing that you have that locked in. Also, other things with which you can do is you can create perhaps some type of a simulated index concept. So in other words, let's say that you take uh, your 80% allocation towards stocks and you determine that 60% is what you feel more comfortable with. Well, maybe with some of that 20% money, maybe 1% to 2%, You can use that with buying some call options on the SPY, SPX, whatever the case may be, or or some spreads or some type of option strategy to make up for it. You can manage your risk within that, and you can actually have something to where you'll have a plan should the market actually go against you. Now, I'm of the school of thought that some people like to buy high, sell higher. I've always been more of a buy low, sell high kind of guy. Uh, Well, let's be honest, I'm just a buy kind of guy. I buy high, I buy low, I buy anywhere, you know me. But in reality, we need to respect the fact that we are at all-time highs towards the end of the year. And some ways with which you can do that in allocating your assets are some things that I just described. And so you don't want to make these decisions and have these things happen if and when the market goes down 20% over the course of the next six months. Could it happen? Absolutely. Do I think it's going to happen? No, I don't. But I do think that we are in for a pullback sometime between now and the next 20 years. That I'm very confident of. But I just don't know when it's going to happen. And I think it's very important that you are prepared for if and when it happens uh, by doing some of the things with which I had mentioned. So asset allocation, last strategy block for 2021. Back to you, Mark. Thank you for that. And here I was all excited about my lordship. And I just found out we have a listener who has also has a, has a has a plot of land in Scotland. So congratulations to the other noble titles lurking around, the other lords lurking around our live chat. I'll have to see if our plots are adjacent there, Mr. Unlimited. Perhaps we can go visit them in Scotland together. So there we go. A lot of nobility tuning into the show this week. That's why, indeed, maybe there are multiple lords of the options market floating around out there. As we keep on rolling, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's go around the block. Before we go there, really quickly, let's catch you up. We got one last week of the year here, so we thought one final question of the week was appropriate. We thought it really needs to be something epic to encapsulate the madness that was this year. And so we thought, let's look at the numbers. Let's see how the numbers are shaping up. We all know 2020 was a record, was an insane, was a blow the doors off type of year for overall options volume. About seven and a half billion contracts with a B. That was a ridiculous amount of volume. I, no one thought 2021 could really hang, and it turns out 2021 said, hey, hold my beer, because it beat that level by about mid-October. <laughs> Coming into the end of the year, it's threatening $10 billion. Not going to hit that, probably, but getting pretty darn close. We're closing in on a billion contracts a month, listeners. That's coming up. That's uh, It's getting pretty close. <laughs> So you were at 900 something thousand, I believe, for November. So, yeah, just crazy town out there. So threatening 10 billion. I mean, where does it end? Does it end? That's the question we have for you this week. We said, you know, can 2022, can it possibly top what we saw this year 
from an overall options volume record. So you gave your three choices as usual. Yes, it's going to be another record year. No, the party is over. Or you don't care because you're too busy buying calls in GameStop. Get in there and let us know. I won't reveal what our audience is thinking right now. This just went live before the show. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with the greasy as the meatball. Mr. Meatball, A, do you think the party can continue in 2022? Or will it take a bit of a break? B, more importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for? And C, what are you watching for the rest of this week until Thursday, sir? Yeah, you know, I don't know if the party's going to continue. It feels like it's getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, Namibia. Um, what? Namibia. Okay. <laughs> Valentino wanted I, to know the name of a country. I think he just saw um, your cool Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull and wanted to build it with you right now. Completely. Um, I, you know, it's definitely getting long in the tooth, and you can kind of see some of the memeness coming out of it. This was a question that I had been kind of asking you guys. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, it feels like it's getting long in the tooth. Let's just say that. You think our audience is going there too? Yeah. All right. Two votes for nay. And what are you watching for the rest of the week, sir? Uh, you know, what is going to happen with this market? I mean, we're up 54 points. Uh, in the S and P, the Nasdaq is up one and a half percent. VIX is now down on the day. Uh, how low can VIX go? Can we get to uh, the croissants fifteen ninety nine this week? He predicted on volatility views, uh, and you know I'm ke- I'm still keeping a close eye on Arc funds because their holdings are just puking, and I- I'm really interested to see. You know, what what kind of happens with ARC over the first quarter? And, you know, for the rest of the week, are we going to get the continued insane Santa Claus rip? I don't know. But uh, it's certainly something interesting to keep an eye on. It has been quite insane. Let's go out to the land of insanity known as St. Charles. Mr. Uncle Mike, A, do you think the options party will continue next year? B, do you think our audience thinks that? And C, what are you keeping an eye on until we gather here together on Thursday? I think that it does. I would agree. It is starting to feel a little bit long in the tooth. So I'm going to go with that. And I think the audience is going to feel that way too. Um, I think that um, like, uh, like the rock lobster says options, love a bull market. And, and this, there's going to be, it's going to be tough to, if we make a run at 5,000, 5,000 is a key number, I believe. And so just watching it in the SPX, if we can make a run at 5,000, I think the party can continue until we get to 5,000. Then I think that 5,000 will be kind of a tough hurdle to climb with the S&P 500. And so uh, I think that just the fact that we're pretty close to being there, that's why I think we're getting a little bit long in the tooth. But I do think that the party can continue until 5,000. And so in terms of what I'm watching the rest of the week, I want to see if we can make a run at 4,800. Would not have been expecting that to happen this week, but uh, that's uh, why they call them options, or that's why options are such a wonderful thing, is that uh, I can be wrong and still put options down and uh, be prepared for when and if I'm wrong. So that's the beauty of it. So watching that, Uh, Watching to see if uh, we do have more volatility bleed out uh, in relation to what Longo, or I'm sorry, what Seabass was saying earlier in the show, we're flat, but we're really down on the VIX because of the weekend in reality. So uh, looking to see if we can bleed out a little bit more throughout the week and um, just going to be putting on hedge positions for 2022 the rest of this week as well. So that is what's going on my radar right now. Unfortunately, that music means we've come to the end of this program. Don't worry. Option block not done for the year yet. One more for Thursday before we shuckle off and shuffle off into the new year. Of course, not done today either. Coming back a little bit later today with the Crypto Rundown. It's our final one of those for 2021. It's going to have an interesting look back at all the crazy highs and lows (laughs) that we've seen in the world of crypto. Don't worry, Uncle Mike. Not going to be all Shiba all the time out there so 20 i should say crypto 2021 look back coming up in about an hour if you're listening live you're listening after the fact just hit next 
They'll be waiting for you on your device of choice. Now let's go back around the horn. Let's start with the greasiest of meatballs. I know you're going to be busy building that sweet, sweet Castle Grayskull, Mr. Meatball. But if folks want to hit you up in between your building sessions, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, yeah, go to optionpit.com and uh, check out our blog. I'm writing on VIX and volatility just about every day. Totally worth the read. There you go. Hit them up at optionpit.com, especially if you have any any building tips for some of those little dicey parts where things get need some small hands, let's just say, to get some of those <laughs> together. Hopefully your son can help you with that. As we go around the horn to the uncle of the mics, so hopefully next time we hear from him, he'll have a deep, rich, lustrous sound. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks want to check out that sound for themselves, where should they go? What should they do? (laughs) Check out my YouTube channel. I got one whole video up there now, but I'm literally going to be working on more of them as soon as this show is over. Uh, For St. Charles Wealth Management, follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W, or check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. If you are looking for a financial advisor who combines options with asset allocations, among other things. Among other things, indeed, like a healthy dose of Sheba. You want to learn more? Hit him up. Give him a hard time about his crypto stance. Give him a follow on the old Twitters at Mike Tussaw. T-O-S-A-W is the place to go. And you know where to go to follow us and give all of our vote and all of our polls and everything else at options on most of the major me- social media platforms. Pretty easy to find. Back again in exactly an hour for the Crypto Rundown. Back again tomorrow. One final pro Q&A session. Speaking of crypto, Got the Spikes and the uh, Bitval father joining us to shuffle off the new year there on the Pro Q&A Hot Seat. So get your questions in about Vol, SKU, term structure, maybe a little bit of Crypto Vol as well if you want to get them in there. Uh, For Mr. Simon Ho joining us in the Hot Seat tomorrow as we roll out, out the new year. And then, of course, we'll have the advisors option coming up after that. So if you want kind of your look back with uh, the Oracle of New Hampshire there looking at some interesting highs and lows from the year out there. We'll get to that later tomorrow as well. Back again on Wednesday for your double dose of Options Bootcamp, Options Playbook Grader. Remember, we recorded those live last week, so they'll be live to tape. You folks in the Secret Club already heard those, but they'll be hitting the network on Wednesday. And then back again on Thursday, another episode of the Option Block, the final one for 2021. We'll see you then. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.